Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Tata Communications earnings conference call for Q3 FY24. We are joined today by our MD and CEO, Mr. Amur Lakshminarayanan, our CFO, Mr. Kabir Ahmed Shakir, and our head for IR, Mr. Rajiv Sharma. The results for the quarter ended 31st December 2023 have been announced today afternoon, and the quarterly data pack is available on our website. I trust you would have had the chance to look at the key highlights. We will commence today's call with comments from Lakshmi, who will share his thoughts on the business and long-term outlook, followed by Kabir, who will share his thoughts on the financial progress achieved. At the end of the manager's remarks, you will have an opportunity to get your queries addressed. Before we get started, I would like to remind everyone that some of the statements made or discussed on the conference call today may be forward-looking in nature and must be viewed in conjunction with the risk and uncertainties we face. A detailed statement and explanation of these risks are included in our annual filings, which you can locate on our website www.tartacommunications.com. The company does not undertake to update these following statements publicly. With that, I would like to request Lakshmi to share his views. Over to you, Lakshmi. Thanks, Shirag. Um, welcome to all of you for the third quarter FI24 earnings call. Uh, this being the first call for the year, I uh, want to wish you all a very happy new year. Uh, we're very pleased to share that our reported revenues grew by 24.4% year-on-year. Our reported EBITDA is up by 5.3% year-on-year and 11.7% Q-on-Q. Our adjusted PAT, excluding the exceptionals, was up 13.9% Q-on-Q. Further, we're very happy to report that our quarterly revenue crosses the 5,000 crore mark and our data revenues crossed the 4,000 crore mark, coming in at Rupees 4,618 crores and was up 15.6% Q on Q and 28.5% 20, year on year. Digital services are now 45% of the total data business. This is in line with our aspiration to get it to 50%, which will position us firmly as a leading Comtech player. This is an important milestone from where we started three years back. Our underlying data revenue growth at 6.6% year on year was affected by the macro conditions. Our YTD reported revenue growth was at 15.1% on a consolidated basis. Our YTD reported data revenues are up 20.1% and up by 10.2% from an underlying perspective. As part of financial disclosures, we are reporting both underlying and reported numbers in line with our commitment to the highest standards of financial disclosure and governance. That said, it is important to recognize that Switch and Calera are being run as an integrated business. For example, Switch and our media is led by one business leader. We have already moved to a structure for Calera, Digo, and InstaCC, where they are in one customer interaction suite unit and led by one business leader. Customer opportunities will be looked at holistically as opposed to looking at it from an individual product lens. Coming to profitability, our efforts have enabled us to report 11.7% growth in Q on Q EBITDA this quarter. And I'm encouraged to share that we have been able to fast track the cost synergies of our career acquisition. For Switch, the EBITDA losses have narrowed down further and we hope to accelerate on our path to EBITDA break even. This quarter, the EBITDA margins came in at 20.1% versus 20.8% the previous quarter. The drop in margins is primarily due to the change in revenue mix as the revenue share of digital portfolio keeps increasing. On the subsidiary review, which I talked about last quarter, we are making good progress. We have mutually agreed to exit a large contract in TCTS, which was not profitable. And we will share more on the review as we progress. Now, coming to our segmental performance, our core connectivity business revenues grew by 4.3% year on year. To remain relevant and to be the partner of choice for our customers, we continue to enhance our customers' experience by enabling our customers to consume the services digitally. Our digital portfolio revenues to let rupees 2,099 crores growing strongly at 78.2% year on year and 44.1% year on Q, aided by consolidation of the Calera financials. Underlying digital revenues grew by 11.4% year on year this quarter. YTD underlying growth is at 18.3%. From a YTD perspective, except for incubation, all segments have grown mostly above 20%. Next-gen next gen connectivity in particular is up 43.6% YTD, and Collab, which was a drag until last financial year, is up 
on a YTD basis. Our underlying collaboration portfolio grew by 4.4% year on year and 3.1% Q on Q. The growth is on the back of robust traction in our customer interaction suite, which has offset a seasonal decline in the usage-based revenues this quarter. With the joint capabilities of both Calera and Digo, it helps us to position as a formidable player. We remain committed to building an intelligent, contextual multi-channel communication solution and creating a customer category of CIS to help us scale growth. We recently enabled Singapore, Singapore Airlines to transform the airline's communications and collaboration tools to enhance employee productivity and boost user experience. This new transformative initiative delivered on Tata Communications Global Repeat Platform will help the airline create new benchmarks and customer experiences. Our next-gen connectivity offerings revenue declined by 1% Q1Q and up by 37.9% year-on-year. Our new offerings like managed Wi-Fi, ISO Multi-Cloud Connect, Flex SD-WAN, and SASE continue to gain traction with enterprises. The case in point is uh, with JLR, where we further strengthened our partnership by deploying our digital fabric comprising of our agile infrastructure, platforms, and managed services that will help integrate JLR systems, workforce, suppliers, stakeholders, and customers across the globe, delivering a seamless flow of data to enrich key aspects of their business ecosystem. Our cloud-hosted security revenues improved by 12.5% year-on-year. Our ISO private cloud encompassing both infrastructure as a service and platform as a service grew well above the teams. Our media revenues, including the revenues from Switch, were sequentially up by 0.6% Q-on-Q and 110.3% year-on-year. Excluding Switch, media revenues were up 6.5% year-on-year. Combining capabilities of Switch and our MES business, we are very well positioned to capture the incremental opportunities both in global and regional sports video market and with a key focus on increasing wallet share from the existing customer base. Moving to our incubation portfolio, we witnessed a flat quarter. Muted growth this quarter is on the back of a large customer implementation we delivered in the same period last year internationally. Our new business continues to grow as we strengthen the segments we operate in while exploring new revenues. We also continue to stabilize the international opportunities and design wins in the IoT segment to propel this portfolio forward. To summarize, we believe that our digital fabric is a powerful concept which enterprises, especially in the international big markets, are beginning to realize. We are confident about the larger opportunity and with this strong conviction, we will continue to improve and derive value of these organic and inorganic investments and continuously augment our capabilities. With this, I'll request Kabir to share the financial highlights. Thank you, Lakshmi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Let me take this opportunity to discuss the highlights of our financial performance uh, for the quarter. Uh, this has been a historic quarter for us as we surpassed the benchmark of 5,000 crores in our consolidated revenues uh, for the first time ever. Our data revenues continued their healthy growth momentum despite the macroeconomic uncertainties amidst a challenging demand environment. Our reported revenue for the quarter stood at 5,633 crores, improving by 24.4% year-on-year and 15.6% on a sequential basis. Normalizing for Forex, our consolidated revenues grew by 22.6% year-on-year and 15.1% quarter-on-quarter. Data revenue for the quarter stood at 4,618 crores, growing at 28.5% year-on-year and 15.6% on a sequential basis. The underlying data growth stood at 6.6% year-on-year. Revenue growth for our digital portfolio stood at 78.2% year-on-year and 44.1% quarter-on-quarter, driven by the consolidation of the Calera acquisition. Moving to margins, the reported EBITDA margins for the quarter came in at 20.1%, and the underlying EBITDA margins were at 21.7%. Our core business margins, excluding subsidiaries, were at 23.6%. Our absolute EBITDA stood at 1,134 crores, improving by 11.7% quarter on quarter and 5.3% year on year, aided by a strong focus on driving profitable growth from organic and inorganic investments. I'm delighted to share that we continue to succeed with our fit to grow strategy, with Calera turning EBITDA positive ahead of our expectations in the first quarter of consolidation itself and switch to making good progress towards EBITDA break-even. We believe there is room to drive more value from both organic and inorganic investments we've been making and we see multiple levers to achieve this. Net debt stood at 
uh, rupees 9310 crores and led to ebitda at 2.2x grossly for the quarter at 21% our increased debt levels and sequential decline in grossly is driven by color acquisition cash capex for the quarter stood at 630 crores and the ramp up is attributed to payments coming up from capex projects committed in the prior year as suggested previously the free cash flow for the quarter is at rupees 77 crores these financial KPIs are very much in line with our expectations. FAT for the quarter stood at 45 crores, driven by a one off provision of 206.6 crores pertaining to a recent Apex Corp judgment regarding the treatment of uh, license fee being capital in nature and not revenue expenditure for the purpose of computation of taxable income. Though the company is not a party to the above judgment, as a matter of prudence, the company has assessed and taken the aforesaid provisions. Moving to subsidiaries, our payment business today has more than 95% of the current quarterly in revenues coming from the franchisee model. We have 4,600 plus franchisee ATMs and only 128 company uh, owned ATMs, which with this reversal being achieved in just 24 months, resulting in the business turning a bit positive. TCTSL revenues uh, improved by 10.7% year on year due to improving customer engagement and better pricing. We have mutually agreed to exit a large contract in TCTS, which was not profitable, and this will improve the overall business health. Secondly, we have reported revenues from the campaign registry, the information hub that allows us to register messaging campaigns as part of our subsidiaries, and is it, it is being separately managed as a subsidiary as well. This is a business which is part of our recent Kalera acquisition. Over the last few years, we have focused on changing the texture of the business to significantly improve the customer relevance quotient and drive sustainable and profitable growth. Our finance strategy of fit to compete and fit to grow allowed us with the elbow room to invest in inorganic capabilities to improve, strengthen our Comtech positioning. To sum up, we will continue to invest in building long-term capabilities, which will help us cement our modes and our long-term ability to consistently create value for our shareholders. I will now ask Chirag to open the forum for Q&A. Thanks, Kabir. Interested participants may kindly raise their hands for the question and answer session. We will wait for a minute for the queue to assemble. The first question is from the line of Sanjay Jain from ICICI Securities. Sanjay, you have been requested to unmute. Please unmute yourself and ask the question. Hi Sanjay, you're on the Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Sanjay. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, uh, first of all, congratulations on uh, successful integration and probably a much better performance from the acquisition. Uh, so let me start with that. Uh, can you help us understand what are the synergic benefit uh, uh, we had uh, while last quarter uh, Calera was a negative minus five percent EBITDA margin, and this quarter we have achieved a positive pad which is a which is a significant improvement in the uh, performance of the calera so one uh, what are the synergy benefit and number two uh, what is the underlying growth in calera for this quarter yeah let me take the first part and i'll you know come to the growth in a, in a bit firstly let me say integration is complete we are far from it we have just started that journey Sanjesh. Um, so there are three components to uh, to any you know acquisition. Uh, the most important one is is integration. We have a project management uh, team in place and which is tracking various uh, milestones in the integration. So that's on track. Then we have uh, revenue synergies and we have cost synergies. Uh, what as um, as Lakshmi mentioned and I you know um, alluded further, 
the cost synergies, we have actually fast tracked it. Um, we had enough uh, window um, for available for us, even the pre-close itself to understand what are the levers. Um, to just say it was an SEC regulated NYSE listed company. So alongside came a lot of costs, you know, um, with that uh, with that kind of a uh, regulated structure. Uh, so obviously we were, we were quick to, to delist uh, within 10 days of uh, the close, 6th of October, we delisted from NYSE. And there were multiple other uh, low hanging fruits from a, a cost perspective, which we were quick to, you know, take it out. So that, I would say that's definitely, you know, uh, one lever which we have fast tracked. And therefore, we have now seen that the CIS portion, you know, of, uh, of Calera uh, has, um, you know, uh, turned you know a bit of positive as a result. We continue to have the focus, you know, I would say on the business to drive, you know, the revenue synergies, and of course, you know, it is the uh, synergy of growth, um, the combined portfolio of Deco, Insta CC, and Calera, uh, forming part of the new category that we are talking called CIS, which is what is going to drive the entire thing, and we are quite, you know, I would say energized by that. So Sanjish, and the, I mean, let me add, I think the, you know, one quarter would be too soon to call uh, a success. I think uh, the teams are extremely focused. Uh, we are very excited about the talent uh, that we have of the combined teams. Uh, and as Kareem mentioned, you know, we are going through this with a very disciplined execution, right? So. Uh, this whole integration will take time, um, extracting all the cost energies, uh, driving all the revenue synergies, um, getting all the products and platforms together. Uh, we will further invest in uh, making the product more intelligent by adding AI and other capabilities. So we have some ways to go, but we are very pleased with the beginning that we have made. Great. And on the revenue? Growth, sorry, revenue growth in Calera for this quarter. Again, only one quarter, uh, Sanjesh. It's too soon to call out any quarterly trends and so on and so forth. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, now, how has been the switch experience? Because there, I can see there is a 25 crore reduction quarter on quarter on the losses. Last quarter was 37 odd crore, and we have brought it down to 12 crore. Uh, is it again a combination of cost and revenue or it is just uh, cost as of now? Because revenue uh, tends to look like a flattish quarter on quarter. Um, when yeah. we had a cricket event also in India, I thought that should have benefited us. Yeah, I think media overall, uh, okay, let me add a, uh, on the switch again, we are going through the execution on both the cost and the, and the revenue synergies. and. Uh, as you pointed out, the, 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 the losses are narrowing and we will soon be um, you know, breaking even that and, uh, and, and they're on moving forward. Uh, from a revenue standpoint, there are multiple, uh, uh, multiple things that play as far as the media business is concerned. Uh, and switch, you know, we have to invest more on the, on the front end. Uh, which we will be doing. So there were some one-off revenues, uh, what they call as occasional use revenues, oh, like that. and that was a long tail. We are consciously looking at the long tail to see, you know, should we be having the long tail or focused on larger properties and larger contracts? And the business is going through that transformation and aligning to what uh, our media business uh, has been doing. Uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, overall media revenues. Uh, you would see, you know, last year we had a, a World Cup which uh, gave us a boost, and that's a very good event. Uh, otherwise, there's nothing to call out on the revenue front as well. Fair enough. Uh, just one last question on the uh, acquisition. Uh, we have earlier guided that a double digits in uh, margins in uh, Calera is what we are targeting. Uh, with this initial start, do you think that's possible in say next 18 months to 24 months? Yeah, I think we uh, we mentioned that uh, uh, Sanjesh that uh, we want to do breaking even in the short term, and we said in the medium term we would want to get to this, and that's what we will be doing. So, uh, I think we will we will execute and we'll let you know as we progress. But we'll uh, again, as I said, one quarter is too soon to call out uh, many things. Okay. Uh, you know, we did say that that's our direction of travel, and that is what we would be doing. 
sorry uh, my follow up question uh, on on the core business or the underlying business uh, there uh, it has we have seen this quarter of material deceleration in revenue growth uh, 11% growth in the digital versus ytd 18% if i remove this quarter we were upwards of 20% uh what has led to this sudden deceleration in the growth and how does our order book looks like for uh, remainder of this year and next year yeah so um again i will take more a uh, a ytd perspective um uh, in this sandesh we have been saying that yes there is a deceleration uh, uh in the in the digital but uh, that's one is largely attributed to the macro i think last quarter also you asked the same question right in terms of this yeah. and 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 i i think i answered the same thing the, the macro conditions are still not very favorable so if you look at other companies in the same domain i think they've called out some uh, slow down um, the uh, the positive that i'm going to look at is uh, with our expanded portfolio um our levels of participation in larger opportunities that we see our funnel is therefore healthy and take the numbers is i i called out last two quarters uh, not just last quarter the last two quarters i think it continues to uh, be longer than uh, than normal um so i think those are the conditions that we are we are in but overall given the macro conditions i think our our growth is still very uh, creditable and uh, we are quite uh, you know pleased with what we have delivered of course we can be doing more as and when the conditions improve we are definitely in a position to do uh, so any more color on the order book how do you see it growing because we were growing at double digit earlier uh, are we still doing that because uh, we have invested significantly on the food on the street particularly on the international market uh, product expansion so this is this should have significantly expanded our reach as well as the uh, valid share i thought it should help us in the vendors uh, right now no it is it is improving so our international growth is uh, is quite good I, i wouldn't say all the regions in the international geographies are are firing i think certainly there are certain markets which are firing very well and we are seeing a good uh, double digit you know uh, one of the markets is delivered you know upwards of 20% one of them is just shade below 20% um, but you know all regions are yet to fire uh, but uh, those investments will pay dividends and as i called out you know with our expanded portfolio our levels of conversation and engagement with customers are definitely improving uh uh thanks thanks uh, lakshmi on that one last question probably on the balance sheet side uh before i come back in the queue uh the the cash conversion appears to be quite weak abir for last two quarters uh, uh and that is driving uh, net debt higher than our acquisition cost uh, uh is there anything change in we are seeing in the uh, cash conversion uh, along with the uh, uh, decision making getting slower in the deal are we also seeing a delayed payment from the customer side um sanjeev I'm, i'm acutely aware of that there is no um, no cause for concern there um we did have um in the past a lot of tax refunds that uh, that the team meticulously went ahead and then collected so obviously after a point that that indeed dries up so uh, there is very uh, little left to skim out you know there so that is one um working capital there were indeed challenges in the in the previous quarter not not this this quarter this quarter is likely you know better although we could we could have done little more than better than what we should have um our capex is um is going up you know um, if you recall last year when um, our approved capex was higher the cash capex was actually lower uh, because of delayed deliveries and better payment terms that we the supply chain teams had uh, you know had negotiated so all of that catch up is is happening you know in these quarters now where the cash capex is actually higher than the than the approved capex so so a, i would say a combination of all of these things which is why we are seeing the uh, the impact on you know uh, on the free cash flow okay. 
Kabir, actually, there is a lot of disturbance in the background, and I'm sorry I couldn't uh, hear anything. Uh, but I will take it from uh, Rajiv of the of the record. But I think there's a problem with the audio system. I mean, not at this side, uh, Sanjesh. I don't know if uh, anybody else. Uh, maybe we'll ask the next, uh, you know, question um, and figure out if that is a problem. Sorry. Yeah, our teams listening and remotely are saying that they have a good quality, so we'll check anyway. Why don't we pick it up, Sanjesh, with Rajiv separately? Yeah. Separately. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks, Lakshmi. Thanks, Kabir, for uh, all the efforts and best of luck for the coming quarters. Thank you. Thanks, Sanjeev. The next question is from line of Santosh Sinha from MT Global. Santosh, uh, Santosh, you have been requested to unmute. Please go ahead and ask your question. Uh, my question is uh, one regarding uh, trade receivables. Uh, so uh, what we have seen is that there has been a marked increase from uh, in the trade receivable uh, to rupees two two billion from one point seven billion in last quarter or from one of the customers. Uh, so uh, uh, what is the plan of the company actually to recover this receivable and what is the way forward for this? And second question is regarding uh, uh, the slowdown in growth uh, in terms of uh, incubation uh, in particular. So uh, there has been incub incubation was down 2% 2 percent uh, uh, year on year basis. So what is the key, uh, key reason for that? Let me take the receivables question first. Um, it is um, there's nothing you know, to worry. It's just the consolidation of Calera. Um, when we actually added the Calera financials to us, we've obviously added all the p item and the balance sheet items as well. So the addition of of Calera, when you add together, um, sees the absolute increase in receivables. The days uh, outstanding, which we track as a KPI, is completely under control, Santosh. Um, yeah, on the on the incubation, uh, Santosh, I think I mentioned um, yeah. there is one portfolio uh, which got affected because of a, a large contract that we had last year in the international region uh, in IoT. That project was delivered uh, and that saw a bump up in revenue um, so q on q basis uh, we are seeing that but uh, other than that uh, move which is a major part of the incubation on a ytd basis we are seeing uh, good growth uh, next question is regarding uh, core connectivity uh, there also uh, we have seen some moderation means uh, uh, in this quarter uh, 4.3 percent year-on-year growth was a seven percent last year, and also uh, it's a actually a decline of 0.7 percent quarter on quarter. So, what has led to this core connectivity, and how we can see this in the long term? See, core connectivity we always call that in the long term. You know, it'll be a, a, a low single uh, digit to mid single digits is what we called out. I think last year and a couple of years. Uh, there was uh, a lot of investment by the uh, cloud providers, the major uh, cloud providers and uh, other CSPs, uh, which helped to drive uh, the core connectivity. Um, within our enterprise segment, the core connectivity is still holding up. Uh, but yeah, that is what it is. So, uh, and, and at 4.3 is still, uh, I would say better than what if for the for the medium term we had anticipated the core connectivity to grow at. Uh, one last question uh, regarding the margin outlook uh, in the long term. So uh, since this quarter, uh, it's better than uh, uh, the margin is better than what we were expecting. Uh, how uh, how do uh, how should we see that uh, in the long term overall the margins going forward? Uh, is there a lot of synergy benefit that will come through or there will be a means uh, uh, going forward, uh, the synergy benefit will not be as strong as we have seen in this quarter. How should we go uh, look at it in terms of long term margins? Look, I let me remind our long term ambition is to stay in the 23 to 25 percent, you know, EBITDA margin range. 
uh, with the acquisitions that we've done in Switch and in, in Calera, you know, mathematically, you know, one can do what that impact was. Uh, we are slightly, it's just one quarter, so we are slightly better than you know, what it would have been uh, because we have accelerated some cost synergies. Having said that, you know, our guidance that in the medium term, we will get back to the 23 to 25 range, not just the EBITDA margin, I would say ROC, our debt, debt, net debt, all the financial KPI ranges, you know, we'll get back to that steady state in the in the medium term. And we are absolutely on course, you know, to, to get there. So I have nothing further to add than reiterate that the only um, goal post for us on a steady state long-term basis is the 23 to 25 range. Well, thank you, thanks. That's my question. Thanks, Antosh. The next question is from Gautam Bharti from Chanakya Investments. Gautam, you have been requested to unmute. Please unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question. Just wanted to understand a couple of things. Uh, you know, firstly, uh, just just uh, you know, probing again, I know you've answered a lot on the growth, but you know, uh, Lakshmi, if you just go back last quarter, one of the things you had said was, uh, uh, you know, the the slower growth that we saw last quarter was was partially because of uh, the slowdown in order booking that we had seen in the H H two of last year, and uh, we had seen much better order booking in the first half. So, is it that you know uh, some of these orders have been delayed because of the current environment, or or how should we read it because if my understanding is right, the orders were in the bag and it should have given us much better growth. So is it, is it slower execution of those orders or is it churn or what is caused, uh, uh, caused this uh, slow, slow growth? So I think I mentioned uh, related to last year, uh, H1, we had a good and H2 had slowed down in the order booking. Yeah, and yeah. Slowing down of the revenues. Uh, and subsequently, uh, related to the H2, we were seeing good funnel and uh, conversion, but it was not at the same levels of the H1 last year, uh, Gautam, while it was improving. Um, so I think the, the conditions are still the same. Our funnel still looks uh, healthy. Our funnel additions and our participation levels are increasing. But I would say the overall order booking uh, uh, has not grown so much that we can call out uh special really. so uh i think the uh, called out last time and even this time in my commentary is that you know our participation levels are increasing and improving uh, and uh but the, the decisions are slower sometimes in the funnel we shell the opportunities because the customers are taking too long to make a decision and we are flushing that out of the funnel and starting all over again but despite that our funnel looks uh quite uh, quite healthy so I think that only tells me that uh, our relevance to our customers are increasing and our participation is increasing, uh, but the conversion is taking time. Uh, having said that, uh, compared to you know, uh, you know the, uh, the the internationally we have seen growth, uh, which is a good indication uh, for us. Um, and relative to two years ago when we saw what our uh, digital portfolio overall was doing. I think last year we did well and we continue to do well this year. So this is only a reference point compared to what it was two years ago. Um, but looking at our ambition, um, our ambition is much greater and we have to do more and we want to do more. And as and when the macro condition improves, we will be well positioned to do it. And and Lakshmi, the this slightly better order booking in H1 versus uh, uh, muted of uh, order booking in H2. I'm just trying to understand: are we are we on a trajectory where where have we hit the bottom in terms of revenue growth, or or we could see more pain if the environment remains the way we are today, right? I'm just trying to understand more color on on how should we think of trajectory. Uh, are we still in uncertain territories, or are we are we are we are we past the the uh, the worst is behind us in a way. Um, it's it's difficult to to say, Gautam. I would think you know, and if you're referring to our Q on Q growth uh, narrative this quarter, that's why I added the YTD uh, growth. If you look at the YTD growth parameters, they are quite uh, quite decent. So I would read more into the YTD growth and extrapolate as opposed to looking at a. A Q on Q or even a Y on Y because there are some aberrations in last Q3 to this. 
so those all those things i would ask you to look at if i look at the ytd numbers while the growth is slower uh, it is still much better than uh, what uh, the market condition despite the market conditions we're doing that is very creditable is what i would say and sorry to persist on this but is it fair to estimate that you know going forward uh, uh, expect ytd to continue to happen and on a much more sustainable basis because there is a very sharp deceleration that has happened in the in the in the three quarters right two out of four growth services have reported negative qoq quarter this time and and i can understand that this can happen uh, sometimes but uh, is it the right way to think about it ytd is the right way then we can we can think of it that way going forward i would i would think why today is a is a is a right way to look at it yeah, because in the portfolio of various things we have number of uh, you know things happen fair but, uh, from overall commentary point of view you know we are going to be doubling down on our efforts to you know to for marketing and sales and uh, and all of that so uh, while at the same time being prudent on cost and driving all cost synergies and and even in our organic business uh, there is a lot of cost energy activities that we have carried out even this quarter so we will we will manage all of that prudently but on sales and marketing we will be doubling down because we see that we are participating in more opportunities in fact in international our presence is so small that we are not participating in all the opportunities that we could be and should be participating that's because of lack of footprint so we have to do more perfect and uh, lakshmi this jlr deal if you could you know give some color that you know it, in our mind it looks like you know this is the first digital transformation deal that you've really called out right where you are uh, a or new gen network services uh, kind of a win kind of a deal where you are you're you're doing it at a global scale so have we one similar deals or are there similar deals in the pipeline which you're looking at and and is it, is our understanding right that it is one of those uh, large transformational deals where which could be a big road driver for us going forward yeah i think there are multiple uh, multiple large deals uh, that we have uh, gautam um, um, sometimes those deals are largely i mean we um, in the course of last year you know in one of the major european customers you know we have displaced an incumbent similarly in apac one of the large banks we have displaced an incumbent with our uh, iso internet i think the reason why we called out the jlr is uh, you know while being a large deal it encompasses a larger part of our uh, our our digital infrastructure because we already do connected vehicles for them and this will uh, uh, entail uh, all the network underlay plus the overlay and the security uh, that goes with that um, and uh, and therefore we have called out this deal but there are i mean these are the type of deals that we are going to market with in the international regions perfect and the and the campaign registry business which is 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 uh, uh, which has been a real stand out and a surprise for us uh, uh, is this is it fair to assume that this is this is this is like a, a steady state revenue which could only grow going forward uh, on a quarterly basis or is there any seasonality that we should be aware of Well, look, uh, as I explained, this is um, basically a, a business which, um, which uh, I think Kalera has has done. We quite uh, they're quite proud of you know building this business you know in the US. So currently, it's just a US you know centric business. Um, uh, there are of course um, um, you know they are looking at how they want to you know grow. After a point in time, um, it is all then led to. the number of campaigns that are then run you know in that country and the growth is is linked to that but uh, but it's a it's a it's a robust business which um, validates you know um, and ensures that it reduces spam uh, for both the operators and the and the users and the campaign you know runners as well so that they bring you know sanctity into the entire you know network um, so they do you know i would say pretty well um, and we have tracking you know them kabir just just wanted to understand this is what we clocked this quarter it, it is more or less a steady state uh, number right it is not driven by any specific one off or it's not like this q4 is a uh, q3 is a very strong quarter for them and you know seasonality and uh, just wanted to get some color because is it fair to assume that 120 into 4 is more like an annual revenue for them 
Uh, look again. One quarter don't uh, you know derive anything you know out of uh, out of that. But yeah, it's if I were to say um, like any other you know business, it is driven by usage and the number of campaigns that are run in that particular quarter. So I really do not have the underlying data of what were the historical campaigns that were actually run you know um, you know in in this in that country and how much share we have. And and therefore, so I would resist from giving a very straight answer of into four that you asked. So so sure. um, because because the underlying nature of the business is you know dependent on the number of campaigns it runs. It has a fixed fee and, and then a, and a variable fee you know uh, linked uh, into it. That's how the pricing model actually works. Fair and is it fair to assume that right now it's a US centric business, but you will try to take this business to multiple countries? Um, look, um, it all uh, has a lot of investment linked to that. Okay. Um, so yes, one can go, um, and it's not that easy to replicate the same business in other you know geographies because mobile network operators, their systems processes are different, regulation is different. So it's very easy to say. You know, otherwise, a lot of people would have already done it by now. Uh, plus, it comes with a huge investment you know bill as well. So end of the day, um, they will stand in line. Uh, like many other projects, you know, in front of us, and the resource allocation will be done on uh, on the ROI that you know that particular business case generates. So I'm not going to slam dunk and say yes, we're going to expand to five countries because that decision has not been taken. That, that's very fair. That's very fair, and that's happy to hear that you you're going to be looking at it that way. That's great. Uh, just just uh, two three more two more questions. Uh, you know, at the one off that was one eighty five crores. Is that it? Have we accounted for everything, or is there something more to come in that? I just could not fully understand the uh, what exactly it was. So you know, it just looks like there was some uh, license fee that was uh, asked for, and you paid for the entire thing along with interest. Right? Is that fair? No, that's not what it is. Um... There was a recent Supreme Court judgment of a large telecom operator that came in October, uh, and although it doesn't pertain to us, uh, we have been prudent to actually take you know that um, provision. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, the Supreme Court judgment says that the license fee payable is not revenue in nature for the purpose of computation of taxable income, that it's actually capital in nature and should be amortized over the license period. So what it basically does is it just creates a timing difference. So instead of, you know, um, and and we have done it for the past, um, you know, ten years, um, and and prudently taken that that provision. So there is no shortfall of tax. A small, you know, amount of shortfall of tax is because of the difference in the effective tax rate in um, the various years that you actually see. Uh, but otherwise, it's just the interest component of having, uh, if at all. You know that that comes to us, then that will be the impact. Uh, going forward, um, until you know there's a resolution to this, there will be a true up of the interest. You know that uh, that will happen. So uh, so to that extent, you will in subsequent quarters quarters see a true up of the interest. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And then last thing is AGR, right? Uh, is there any update on that? Uh, uh, any anything that we should be? Is there any any chance of that liability coming up anytime soon for payment? Uh, no, I mean, if it is comes up for payment, then, then we wouldn't have recorded into contingent liability, you know, nation. Um, whatever updates are there in AGR, we are reflecting that in our accounts. If you see in the last four, six quarters, there has been, you know, a lot of activity. There's been uh, the DOT has looked at our, you know, our, uh, our numbers. We have represented to them that there were errors, uh, errors on the face of it. And that's the reason why you see numbers going a little down. In fact, this quarter is because um, the department looked at the obvious errors and and revised their show cost notices. We still maintain um, you know, our our stand that this is not applicable to us. This is sub judice, um, and and therefore whenever it comes up, we will we'll take it. But till the time it is sub judice, what at least we did not want is not have um, have wrong numbers, you know, into the uh, into the into the show cause notice and demand notices. So that we've been working, you know, I would say closely with the DOT to ensure that they, they put in the right numbers, you know, and we agree the principles in which they put so that we know what principles we're going to contest when this comes up in court. No, that's very fair, Kabir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for patiently answering all our questions. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you, Nishit. Thanks, Nishit. Thanks, Gautam. The next question is from the line of Daya Nominik. 
Daria, you have been requested to unmute yourself. Please go ahead and ask your question. Daria, please go ahead and ask your question. Daria has left the queue. Uh, the next question is from line of Mr. Vineet Manik uh, from Karma Capital. Vineet, you have been requested to unmute. Please go ahead and ask your question. Hello. Yeah, Vineet, you're audible. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so thank you. Most of my questions have already been answered. Uh, but uh, Lakshmi, just one question to you. Uh, regarding uh, AI, so anything on that development are we doing? And uh, do you expect any material business uh, coming in for us uh, in the next uh, 6 to 12 months based on the developments? Because we have been going through few reports and news articles saying that a lot of activities happening on the telecom side of the business also. So, yeah. so any, any material advantages are we seeing and are we building on such capabilities? Yeah, um, we are building on capabilities, Vinit. I think this was part of our strategy three years ago, um, starting from training people. So we trained over a thousand people in the company. Uh, we already are seeing AI deployed in some of our processes and products, um, which we have taken to market. Um, and we also are examining because this whole AI, especially after the, the chat GPT, the Gen AI has become quite popular with enterprises. So we anticipate that uh, this is going to require um, a lot of computing power, uh, and therefore uh, we will enhance our uh, our cloud capabilities, the ISO cloud capability that we already have, and enhance it with uh, AI capabilities. Okay, 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 got it. And just one uh, bookkeeping question to uh, Kabir is that uh, we have seen a significant QoQ increase uh, of uh, of around absolute 50 crore rupees in the interest cost uh, so uh, is this something that a peak that we can expect uh, or is it a steady steady state run rate that we can expect going forward or uh, and and is there any one of uh, forex component or something in the interest cost because versus the net debt increase the interest cost seems to be much higher uh, well we have um, assumed the net debt of calera um, as you all know we paid about 100 million for the equity and and whatever was the debt of Calera we have assumed and so therefore that impact you know will come through um, at the moment um, uh, we we had a the Calera bondholders had a change of uh, control clause uh, so when the bonds um, uh, when the change of control happened 30 days from that um, they could exercise and they exercised and the entire 200 million dollars uh, of Bond was repaid. Uh, we have therefore used our short-term facilities to to cover that, and uh, and hopefully we will um, we will recycle that with a more medium to long-term, you know, instrument. Um, so what you see uh, as of now in this quarter is is just that addition and that interest cost as a result of that. Uh, associated, you know, with that as well is the the Fed rates that you actually see that have been. You know um, that have been increasing uh, even in the last quarter also that you know the increase has happened um, so therefore the benchmark rate um, has gone up we have a certain portion of our debt which is hedged uh, but there's a certain portion that is actually open um, and that's in line with our interstate management and hedging policy um, so whatever you see is the residual bit is as a result of that increase in interest cost as well um, I, I can't comment whether that will remain the same or not because of the refinancing that we will do hopefully at a lower cost on the 200 million uh, plus any other you know financing requirement that we will have or any other cash flow changes that we will do which may mean we will we will uh, you know uh, reduce it so our, our ambition as I said is to operate under 2x you know and hopefully we should get uh, to that metric faster you know, uh, than the EBITDA and the Rossi metric. So, therefore, if that comes faster down, then the interest cost also should, you know, reflect that. But these are all very, very, um, you know, dynamic things with a lot of moving parts. So, I can't give you a handle on that uh, on, on the interest cost per se. But those are the drivers for this current quarter. 
Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. Thank you, thank you for answering my questions. Thanks, Vinny. The next question is from Arvind Chetty from Diamond Asia Capital. Arvind, you have been requested to unmute. Please unmute and go ahead and ask your question. This is more on Calera. Assuming that uh, you've reported Calera revenues in the collaboration and CPAS vertical, um, my calculation suggests that Calera revenues on a YOI basis for this quarter has uh, sort of declined significantly from what they reported in December 22 quarter. Is that a fair calculation? No, it is, it is not the right way of calculating because what you see it publicly reported, including the campaign registry business, which we have culled out and reported as part of our segmental performance. So, um, so it will be difficult for you to do an apples and apples comparison that way. Our collaboration portfolio includes CIS, uh, other aspects of DECO and, and it's a CC as well. So, uh, so let me assure you it has not declined. Uh, sure, thanks. Uh, and on the reported basis in terms of EBITDA margin, uh, since the integration of a fair level of integration has been done, is it fair to assume that on reported basis, the margins will see sequential improvement from year on? Let me reiterate. I don't, I, I don't think neither Lakshmi or I said integration is done. We just started on the integration and uh, we will keep a laser focus on doing the integration well. Uh, I mean, for me, doing that well is more important and then doing on time and maybe ahead of time is, is the next you know thing that we'll look at. Uh, what we have highlighted in this particular quarter is one aspect of the integration, which is the cost synergies that have been fast tracked, right? And therefore, the, we have a, a line of sight and a trajectory on the EBITDA improvement, which we have said that in the near to short term, we will do break even. We've, it has happened this the first quarter itself, so we are happy about that. But in the medium term is when we will actually get it to the double digit, you know, EBITDA margin profile, and we will, you know, uh, we will stay focused on that. Uh, and the reason why I'm reiterating that is there are investments that need to be made as we do the integration in the product organization, in the infrastructure, and and the platforms that the combined portfolio needs. We don't want to rob them off and not you know, achieve the, the revenue potential and, you know, and the capability that the entire CS platform has got. Uh, if we myopically get driven only by, by, you know, the EBITDA and profitability, not to say that there is no focus there, but uh, clearly we need to balance both of them together. Thanks, Arvind. The next question is from line of Vibor single from the Vama. Uh, Vibor, you have any question in mute? Please go ahead and ask your question. Yeah. 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 Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi. Thanks. Uh, thanks for taking my questions. Uh, uh, a couple of questions from my side. So uh, one question uh, is uh, for uh, Lakshmi. Uh, Lakshmi, many of the uh, uh, IT services vendors that have reported results this quarter, they have talked about uh, some green shoots uh, appearing in the overall US macro. Uh, uh, your sister concern mentioned about BFSI bottoming out. A larger topic mentioned about green shoots in the future spending. Now I know there is a, 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 a huge, uh, I mean, difference between the client of clients and the work that we do. But when you mentioned that uh, we had the, the uh, growth in this quarter and the overall macro environment had been tepid, uh, do you uh, are we also seeing some kind of uh, conversations with the clients which are kind of hinting towards maybe things improving, maybe if not uh, in terms of the timeline, but directionally uh, things improving for this uh, uh, tech spends. Uh, going into 2024? Um, yeah, I think I would definitely say uh, overall, as all macro parameters have shown, the US market is uh, definitely uh, a, a, an improved condition. Uh, from our customer and our uh, perspective, uh, we are seeing uh, uh, funnels developing there. Um, and as I said, you know, in, in our case, it's very different, right? In different markets, we have to invest and increase our footprints. In the US, we have to do more, uh, and which is what we would be doing. But overall, uh, the commentary that you heard is, uh, is accurate. And, and I would not want to, you know, pick out because our international presence in many markets are fairly small. Um, and anything is a, is a big upside for us. So, truly speaking, other than the slowness in decision, uh, the macro shouldn't be affecting us too much. 
Right. So apart from the delayed decision making part, which continues to be at this point of time, maybe same as, as it was a quarter ago. Um, yeah. Other than that, uh, the, the weak macro shouldn't be too much of a problem for us. No, it shouldn't be. Got it. Got it. Uh, just one last question for Kabir. Uh, Kabir, uh, uh, I think uh, you just mentioned about the interest uh, uh, expense going up because of the short term uh, loans that we had taken for the acquisitions. So uh, I think it's clearly visible in the numbers as well. So, I mean, at this point of time, I mean, uh, the average cost of debt, if we say as a report, is around 6.5%, 6.3%. What is the target that you're looking at in terms of refinancing? Where do we eventually want this average cost of debt to hover around uh, on a sustainable uh, business model? Um, because um, if you actually look at, we have um, a debt equity, you know, structure that is um, that is defined for us an optimal VAC, um, um, and that's the reason why we talked about debt to EBITDA, you know, being under 2x, you know, so that's the optimal VAC, you know, level that which I would like to operate under. Um, and I'm, I'm going to, you know, answer the question by giving you the contours, you know, of, of right. our approach rather than pointing that because uh, the context and the numbers and, and this might change and therefore the number might change. And that's the reason why it's important that we marry to the principle, right? So we are we are committed to an optimal back. Um, I'm also, you know, want to stay committed to a to an investment grade, you know, kind of a rating. So therefore, our uh, coverage and, and service ratios, you know, need to fall within that that ambit uh, as well. Um, and um, and we have a hedging um, a policy which looks at giving a certainty to near term P and L, and therefore hedging a you know a large portion of that. So currently about. Uh, I would say 60% of our um, of our uh, current loan books is uh, you know is uh, is hedged. And finally, in terms of refinancing that you actually mentioned, uh, when we did the NCD issuance back in uh, August, uh, although our requirement was in US dollars, uh, we did borrow because there was an arbitrage that was available in the Indian markets. So we borrowed in Indian uh, market and did a, um, a cross currency swap. Uh, and the landed cost of that was much cheaper than doing it, you know, directly in in dollars. So the treasury team constantly scans the market, as in, is in constant conversations with our banking partners to look at the right opportunities uh, where we will actually do that. So that's the reason why, when we did not have certainty whether the Calera bondholders were indeed tender all their bonds, uh, so we just established a line of credit uh, in early December when the bonds came up for repayment. And now we will examine what is the right structure, right market, right currency you know, for us to be able to do uh, the medium to long term funding to replace this short term um, in line with our our treasury policies. That is uh, that's uh, which I just you know explained about. So those are the contours with which we will operate. Uh, not just this, but I would say there are several other BAU that we have in terms of. Funding BAU capex um, monetization, you know, uh, activities that we do, um, organic cash flow generated by the business, uh, and you know everything put together. So that's the whole cash projection and cash analysis with which we review this. Almost, I would say, with the hedging strategies removed on a, on a weekly basis with the dynamic market, you know, situation that we have. But all of the other things are reviewed almost on a monthly basis. Got it, got it. Thanks a lot for that very comprehensive answer. Just one small uh, bookkeeping thing. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed that. I think you mentioned that. Has all the debt uh, uh, related to the career acquisition is in our books already, or there is some still uh, pending uh, amount that might come in the next couple of next quarter or so? No, no, no. The entire thing is in our books. So the full balance sheet has been consolidated okay. and the balance sheet has been taken. So the full thing is already reflected in our results. Got it, got it. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for taking my question time. Wish you all the best. Thank you, Vibor. Thanks, Vibor. In the interest of time, we will have one more question as the last question from Sanjesh. Uh, Sanjesh, you have been requested to mute. Please go ahead and ask your question. We limit this to one question, please. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> thanks. Thanks for taking my question again. Um, one on the employee side, I wanted to understand. Uh, you did allude, Lakshmi, in your initial comment that. Uh, you want to repurpose the employees from both switch as well as the uh, Calera to cross sell the uh, Tata communication product. Um, yeah. So, so uh, is that agreed by the employees and uh, uh, 
uh, what are the areas of focus for us through those uh, employees to target in the US market? Uh, uh, what are the key areas of focus uh, uh, that will drive that? And will they work along with the, uh, the, the, the put on the sales we have increased? How will that organization structure work? Um, it's probably um, too soon to announce externally the new structure that will be put in place, uh, Sanjesh. But uh, as I mentioned in my commentary, they are all working under one business leader, right? So Switch, for example, is uh, the sales teams are completely integrated. Uh, they take uh, the offerings uh, in a joint way. Uh, both the teams are working together to bring the power of both uh, both companies. Similarly, in Calera, um, we are looking at the sales teams to operate as one as opposed to two different teams. Um, and uh, and you know, as we speak, um, the training for the teams have started on uh, the various uh, offerings within the CIS portfolio. For example, InstaCC is a portfolio that Calera does not have. So the sales teams are being trained on that. Um, and and uh, and that, that's what they will take to market. Whether the Calera teams will take the overall Tadacom offerings, you know, they are not capable of doing that, but they will work in an integrated fashion with our, our regional teams. Uh, to look at uh, you know what are the common accounts, which are the accounts where Tadacom is present and they are not, and vice versa, right? So which we will be, which is what we called out as sales synergies, which we will uh, start looking at, and that activity has already started. So, so we will have both vertical and horizontal uh, structure uh, because this, this appears to be more vertical. While I thought we were moving out of vertical to a more horizontal solution, let's say uh, kind of an organization structure, there is a change in that, right? No, no, not really. So even within the Tadacom portfolio, uh, if you look at, you know, we had what we call as uh, the the products sales specialist. Uh, so if you look at InstaCC and Digo, uh, in the markets where we were operating, both in India and APAC, uh, for example, we had a sales specialist team who would focus only on InstaCC and Digo for instance, right? They will work hand in hand with the account teams and the regional teams because they are the specialists in that portfolio. Now the account teams are charged with understanding the customer context and they will position the overall digital fabric, you know, whether it's the uh, network, whether it's security, whether all, all the portfolio that we have. Uh, but once the opportunities are qualified, these sales specialists will go in to support the account teams to, uh, to take the opportunities forward and close it. Uh, so, uh, you know, in, in, in terms of Calera, so Calera would be the, the sales specialist for the, the CIS portfolio. So it is not any different from the philosophy that we've been operating in. So, so that, that, that two layer of structure will continue and that's what we are implementing uh, yes. for, for the new coming companies as well. Yes, yes, yeah. And th this also means that in an upcoming year, our employee inflation will be lower than what we had historically, right? Because uh, we are getting a very talented uh, foot on street uh, to these two acquisition. Uh, will that be a fair assumption? No, why do you uh, see? I think each of the, you know, if you look at Calera's existing business, uh, that has to grow. So they come with that talent to sell that portfolio of CIS, right? So they will support. Whereas uh, the sales team, which covers a larger set of accounts and hunting for new logos, uh, we need to continue to uh, continue to invest as we grow. So I don't think this would uh, this would make up for the future growth, if you will. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Lakshmi, for answering all those questions and again, best uh, respect for the coming quarters. Thank you. Thanks, Sanjeev. I'll now request Lakshmi to uh, share his closing comments. I think we've answered a lot of questions. <laughs> no, I think the the my top of mind is uh, you know we've uh, in crossing the the five thousand crore mark and crossing the four thousand crore mark on the data business is truly a uh, a milestone that we are all very proud of. Um, I think we are very proud of. Um, the activities of integration that is going on and we will uh, execute all of these in a very disciplined manner. 
to uh, deliver on our uh, on our ambitions of doubling our revenues and achieving all the other financial KPIs. I think this sets up uh, us uh, very well. Thank you. Thank you, Lakshmi. This brings us to the end of the investor call. In case of any queries, please write to investor relations at tatacommunications.com. The recording will be available on our website in the next 24 hours. You may please disconnect now. Thank you.